Welcome to our little walk around the various sites that we've mentioned in the Fred the Head podcast. The way we'll do this is that we're starting on the Newton Road side of the River Trent and we'll work our way around. And we parked at the Sump Pub, which used to be the Royal Oak back in the day. And from here, you can get a really good view of the weir, which is in front of you right now, and the deposition site that we've talked about so much. Now, if you look past the Weeping Willow, you'll see a quite a tall tree on the kind of centre left hand side on the other side of the river. The bottom of that tree is pretty much the deposition site, that end of the weir. And one of the things I noticed, and I always forget unless I come back to the scene, is just how long that weir is. It's 150 yards long. On one side is the mill, and on the other side is the deposition site. So when I've thought in the past about how the body could have got across there, one option has always been someone taking it over the weir. You'd have to be a pretty brave man to go over the weir. It's, it's pretty fast at the moment, the water going across the weir. But we've not had a lot of rain here, so it gets much, much faster. Uh, equally, it's important to say that in periods of dry weather, it can get quite low and you can see the weir really clearly. But one of the things uh, just to point out is that the weir runs parallel to Newton Road and essentially the top level is the channel that goes through the mill and everything that falls away over the weir goes round the other side and rejoins the Trent. So that's the weir, uh, worth looking at, just if anything else, just to get an idea of its scale and also how difficult it might be to actually transport a body from one side to the other. You can also see some debris that's, uh, that's washed up there and that's exactly the kind of thing that back in the day people needed to go from the mill across the weir in order to clear that away because if the weir gets damaged that certainly affects the water going through the mill site but right on the other side of the weir as far as right at the end is where the deposition site was and now as we swing round again you can see the channel that goes along the Trent this upper channel is the bit that goes through eventually into the mill a couple of other islands there and there you can see the start of the mill buildings as the channel feeds its way through uh, through to the mill so what we did is we walked to the other end of the mill so that's 127 and 126 Newton Road. That's where Zoe lived on the left hand side. And this, these were the mill cottages that were associated with the mill. You had to work at the mill in order to live in one of those cottages. These buildings here were mill buildings. I don't think they were, I don't think they were uh, premises. I don't think they were lived in, if you like, at the time. So we're now walking up Newton Road. Uh, I don't know who this fellow is in front of us. We'll catch him up in a minute. But we, uh, we're doing this in real time as well. That's an important thing to say. So this is quite a long video, but for f certain reasons, I think it's good for you to understand exactly how long it takes to get from one place to another. And this is all in real time. So you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to work that out uh, for yourselves. So what we're doing now is walking along that first run of mill buildings and there's a house for sale there if somebody wants to live there uh, and there it is there's the main mill really in all its glory uh, it's a pretty pretty good idea of all of the uh, morning uh, you get a pretty good idea of all the buildings there and where we're walking up to now is where we started this video i.e the sump the royal oak pub and that's what we can see directly in front of us now uh, so Essentially, the mill goes for about 100 yards down Newton Road before you get to the sump. Now, that means that all of those buildings, 126 Newton Road, they're quite a long way away from the deposition site when you actually walk it. And of course, 
they're on the other side of the river from where the deposition site was so we're back now at the sump uh, thoroughly recommend it by the way uh, and this is where we filmed that first piece of film if you like uh, where we could see the weir now what we've done now jump back in the car so you're now in the car with me so I'm giving you a bit of a car ride now uh, look left look right yeah off we go and uh, what I'm going to do is drive you from that side all the way over to Bass's Meadow now we're about to go past where David Nathan was working where Gartham Gopsall lived it's there on the right hand side there where that gap is essentially that was where the bridge was now to respect people's privacy we're certainly not going to be uh, filming people's specific houses and things like that but uh, but that's where it was so if you like the the bridge went across from that gap and on the other side of that bridge that's pretty much where the body was found so now we're driving a little bit further uh, all the way up to Newton Road and this will take us eventually this is the the road that takes you from Winds Hill to, to Newton Solney but now going towards Burton uh, it'd been a pretty rainy day that morning actually I did this I did this last Sunday but it's uh, it dried up a bit in the afternoon uh, you'll be pleased to know so we were able to do this so you'll see we're I suppose it will be about uh, half a mile, maybe a quarter of a mile, It'll take us all the way down now to the quite a dangerous uh, little junction here where we'll turn right uh, and we'll be going over the bridge then that takes us from Winds Hill side all the way over to Burton. And the reason we're doing that is that actually you have to do it in order to get back uh, onto Bass's Meadow there's only you can't cross the traffic to get down that little uh, lane that takes you there meadow road it's actually called but it also gives me an opportunity to show you how uh, Winds Hill and Burton fit together if you like geographically so I don't like that junction I've done it so many times I don't know where, why there aren't more crashes on it but now we're on the bridge it's one of two bridges road bridges that cross uh, the Trent from Burton. One takes you to uh, Windshill, one takes you to uh, a twin village called Stapen Hill. So this is the little road that we need to go down. We've just gone past it that it takes you onto Bass's Meadow but we're carrying on because you have to do a it's a one-way system really we have to follow all the way around but on the right hand side here that's the Queen's Hotel so it gives you a very good idea it's called the Three Queens now but it always used to be called the Queen's Hotel. That's how close it is to the to Meadow Road, which is the road that takes you on to Bassett's Meadow. So we're now following that little one-way system around. By the way, I'm narrating this in, uh, safely in my office after I uh, after I finish the, the little tour. I wouldn't like to be a, a tour guide. I don't think I could drive and talk at the same time. So here we are going left now back over the bridge that we just came across. We've done that little loop and now in about 50 yards time we take a really tight left hand turn which takes you onto Bass's Meadow. So now you are about to come onto Bass's Meadow. You've heard so much about it. Here's this really tight turn. So you see a few scrapes here on the, on the wall where people have overdone it. But uh, So we're on Bet Meadow Road now and over a tiny little bridge and then we enter this really strange little island that we're on now that is very rarely uh, a few people obviously a few houses still still occupied and people live down here but once you get past the end here it's uh it really turns into a bit of a wilderness so but we're carrying on down here and we're turning right and we'll follow the lane all the way down and it goes quite a long way morning goes quite a long way and just here this is an important split because you go right you go to the deposition site and we'll come back and go down that road that's the way you get to the deposition site this is the way most people go if you ever come on the island because this is the way that takes you to the sports grounds and to uh, Bass's sports facility that has been here for years and years and years and in fact 
you can, in fact, the most logical way of getting to places like the rifle range would be this way as well. And in the distance, eventually, we'll be able to show you where the rifle range is, but it's a good way. So you can get a sense of what this island is like now. It's, it's dank and misty and quite a good place, I would imagine, for a, uh, for a horror movie. Now, here's the Bass's kind of sports ground facility just on the left we've just gone past it there so when people talk about the things that are happening the activities that are happening at Bass's sports and social club it's up a road there I and mean, it's only about 100 yards away from where we've just gone past there but we're carrying on down this road see where it takes us uh, as you see the hedges start to enclose around you we won't see anybody else, I don't think. For We won't see anyone else, I don't think, now. Because once you've gone past that, the tracks really only really take you to one of a couple of farms that uh, occupy this part of the island. So, that's pretty much as far as you can go uh, on that leg of the path. Remember, the way uh, there was a fork to the right where people could go... Uh, and that's that's the route, if you like, to the deposition site. So that's one of the farms. And in the background, you can see the rifle range. So that's this massive rifle range that people have spoken about a few times. So we doubled back and went down the fork that took you to the deposition site. So we're walking this now. And it's going to take a bit of a while. So... Uh, I might not narrate all the way down. I, mean, I can talk for England, as you know, but we're going to just simply walk down this track. And one of the things you'll notice uh, is that it's track all the way. And the reason for that is there's a farm at the end of it and there's access to a farm down the end of it. And I suspect this track would have been there back in 1970, 1969, when, when Fred was buried. So... They would have known that this track was there so the body could easily have been moved by a motor vehicle so the reason we're going slowly here is that we're walking now we're not in a car so this is the route possibly that fred may have taken and the killer may have taken i think certain things probably will have changed on this route over the years a lot of the tree planting that's taken place particularly on the left hand side that's relatively new. I think there was a big effort to plant lots and lots of trees on this on this island uh, a couple of well a, f a couple of decades ago, and you'll see that the uh, all the trees are about the same age really. The, the, that kind of height, about twenty or thirty feet, uh, suggests they've all been they've all been planted in very similar vintage really. But everything on the right hand side that really won't have changed at all. Uh, all what you do see is see quite a few fishing pegs, so i.e. stations where fishermen uh, can fish. This is owned by, I think, the Cause Angling Club. I think we're coming to one now on the right-hand side where fishermen obviously can, uh, can step on that board and, and, and fish, if you like, into, into the river. But you'll see there ain't anyone around. I've been to this site probably three or four times I've walked around here never see anyone and of course there are probably 30% more people around than there ever were in 1970 so if we don't see many people now we certainly didn't see many people back in 1969 or 1970 so we're now uh, probably about a third of our way down this track if you are carrying a body this way uh, a dead body uh, a couple of things occur to me one it's a long long way to carry a dead body and I suspect uh, that isn't the way that isn't what happened uh, you will also see as we now take a look at the river and get a sense of uh, what well, the peacefulness of the area really is the first thing to say uh, but also uh, just how wide the river is there and so you get a good sense of uh, um, we're, as we're coming back into Windshill now you can see Windshill in the distance and those houses are very close to 
um, where David Nathan was working. So that's really what we're heading for. But one of the things that st struck me about this particular walk is if you wanted to bury a body, there are lots of places here to bury a body before you get to the deposition site. There's only one reason why that body was placed in the deposition site, and that was because the person knew it was, well, knew it was there, and secondly, knew the chances of its discovery would be extraordinarily small. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is the area. I'll let you enjoy the scenery rather than just talk nonsense for the next couple of minutes. So just to give you uh, a sense of location, so we are, if you like, on the eastern side, the eastern edge of Bass's Meadow. Bass's Meadow essentially runs north-south. Uh, western side is on the Burton side. We're on the eastern Winds Hill side. I think I mentioned on Facebook as well that access to the site is not allowed and in fact i asked permission to, for us to go on the site this time uh, and it wasn't granted and i respect that because you know this is somebody's land uh, they are free to decide who goes on that land and who doesn't go on that land and there's no issue with that whatsoever luckily though uh, a few years ago i did the same journey with permission to go on that piece of land so what we've done is it was spliced into this film some of the film that we took then just so it shows in one film if you like the total story uh, but just to be clear uh, this wasn't filmed now and in fact you'll see some differences in vegetation and in fact when we went that time it was on it was on the 48th anniversary of the discovery of the body so it was in spring uh, so the vegetation will be different because obviously we did this uh, in uh, middle October. So this film that you're watching right now was, was filmed uh, last Sunday, so in the middle of October. But the element of filming which, which was done at the specific burial site itself, that's from spring uh, two years ago. So we're now getting close. So again, it kind of suggests to me, if you are going to transport a body this way, you aren't carrying it by hand. <laughs> you might, he may have walked here uh, of his own volition, of course, that's definitely an option. And it doesn't take long once you're on the island to get to the, to the areas that we're really interested in. It's about probably a 10 minute walk. But equally, this lane always, I think, has had uh, motor access. Uh, there's a farm at the end of it. So they would have been having uh, presumably farm machinery coming up and down this lane for years and years and years. So therefore, I don't think it would be a very significant, uh, a very significant issue uh, to get a car down here. And if Fred's body was tied up and put in the boot of the car, I'm starting to think that's as good a good away as any of, uh, of him uh, getting to this neck of the woods so remember when we were on the other side of the weir uh, when we started this film and I pointed out on the other side of the weeping willow those that tall tree that probably represents the certainly on the skyline a pretty good indicator as to the uh, the position the deposition site well you can see it there uh, just on the top right hand side of your screen that's that tall tree coming from the other direction so we know now that we're very very close to the deposition site in fact this is that little spinny of trees where he was found so i think when i was there it's been a few years of course since i was there since i was here before and it looks different it's it's much more overgrown than when i was here last time that's probably the intention of the of the owner i think they wanted to try to create a, a nature reserve area and they've certainly done a good job of that because 
it really has, uh, one could say, blossomed, but also it's become very, very uh, a huge amount of vegetation in there now. Uh, lots of fallen trees. It's to be honest with you, you know, there's it, it's it's fairly uh, unstable underfoot. I think it looks it. it was when we went two years ago. Now I suspect there's even more so, particularly with the fallen trees and things. So we're really now coming to that specific part, and we're now just having a walk through. We, you know, it's uh, you can see it's lots of barbed wire now and properly fenced off. This wasn't properly fenced off before, so just having a quick look over. This is the area now. This is the specific area where Fred was found. Lots of private property. Uh, but to be honest, even if you got in there now, I'm not sure you'd find much. It's just too overgrown. Grown. It wasn't like this two years ago. It was much clearer. Absolutely, it's almost like jungle. Really densely foliated. Just see on that's on the other side of the river. Those buildings, obviously. There are buildings in this area, uh, the old flint mill, the ruins really of the old flint mill. But when I say ruins, I mean ruins. They're they're probably three inches, four inches off the ground. All the all the, uh, the stone will have been robbed away and used for other things. So what we're trying to do now is just walk out a little further, uh, just to see really if we can get a better view. I and mean, we had no intention of going inside, but. Uh, just to see if we can get a better view for you inside without uh, without actually going into it. So this is what always used to be the second entrance. I think this is the way I went originally when I first came uh, with Anne Hamp Gopsall, who was was the owner of the, the site then. Uh, but you can see a uh, huge amount of trees have fallen in the time that, that, since we were there. Uh, again, lots of private property you can't really see the the actual kiln site or or the rise in the ground which is the most important thing uh where david nathan used to come across the bridge walk over a fairly clear piece of land and then up uh, a rise in the ground where the kilns were and that's where he used to go shooting in fact if you see the images which are on the facebook group or in, or in the book you'll see how clear it was then it really was low level vegetation. Uh, nothing like what you're seeing now. You see it's all properly fenced off now. So what we're doing now is just walking down to the far end of the uh, of the copse, if you like, where the body was found. Uh, we're walking past it. The reason we're doing that is that I want to give you uh, a sense of where the weir is in comparison to this particular copse. If you like, trying to look back from where we started this film, trying to look back so you can get a good sense of... Uh, doing a full 360 degrees if you like around the deposition site it's been a rainy couple of days in Burton but incredibly lush ground but it's very low level of course very low uh, you've got water all around you it's a proper island this within the within the trent it floods completely it's known as the washlands for a reason it gets absolutely inundated and the river trent is a river that's notorious for flooding uh it's uh, i think that's actually where its name came from in roman times uh it when it floods it proper floods
So I think this is kind of the only access into there now, and it's obviously sensibly uh, locked and padlocked now. But that was the a little, that was a bridge over one of the little canals that people do talk about when this little spinny used to be a bit of an island in its own right back in the you know, 40, 50 years ago. And there's narrow streams running through it. And that was one of the bridges across it. But that's pretty much all we get to see really in terms of uh, the actual area as you can see it today. Now, very luckily, we've of course got that film which we're about to show as well from a few years ago. So you can see it in uh, a lot more detail. But now, if you look over there, you can see the weir. So we are now right on the other side of the weir. Now, you remember we, we were standing in the car park filming and you could see this uh, tributary of the river coming away and the one that went to the mill was going past us. Now we're seeing it from the other side. And you can see how fast the weir is and it has not been particularly wet. So when this is really in full flood, it's something to behold. So we're back now at the depositions site. One of the things I just wanted to show you is the kind of landscape similar to how, how it was. Those trees probably not there 50 years ago. Or if they were, they were very small specimens. But you do get a sense, and by the way, there is the, uh, is the rifle range again. So you get a sense of the proximity of it to the rifle range. But it's, it's a pretty desolate place. A uh, lot of bird noise. We're not really... There's the mill, of course, from the other side of the river. But lots of wildlife have, and lots of bird noise. But we've not recorded that necessarily simply because it gives me a chance to do an uninterrupted uh, narration over the top of it. But again, there's the weir. There's the sump on the other side. So the way this runs if, is if you've got the mill to the left of us, as we're looking now, then you've got the sump pub. You've got the weir and a bit further to the right, that's where David Nathan uh, uh, was working with Garth Hank Gopsall and that's where the bridge was. Now, this is the film from a couple of years ago. So you get a much better sense now. This is where he was found. So you'll see it's much lower the vegetation than what we've seen uh, in uh, the earlier part of the film. This is the kiln. They are the two kilns. This is exactly where he was found. So probably this is probably much lower in terms of uh, in terms of vegetation, simply because it's been through a winter. Of course, ours has just been the film we've just made has been through a summer, so that's why there's so much vegetation. Uh, but this is filmed two years ago in early March, so you get a much it's a much clearer picture. There, are the two kilns. That's where the body was. That's the rise in the ground where the kilns were. Again, looking back over to the weir there. So you can see the weir really does, uh, it is very close to the deposition site. Just more images really of the kind of terrain. Uh, very, very densely vegetated. Again, as we said earlier, I think back in 1970, uh, 1971, when the body was found, it was it was much more open. Uh, I don't know why particularly it's it's got so uh, heavily vegetated over the course of the last 50 years, but it might be to do with you know, fertilizers and things on the farmer's ground. But it was much much clearer back uh, back when Fred was found, and you can see that from the photographs. So what you've got in this area is that you've got a series of kind of brick, uh, well, they are the kilns, in fact, but you've got a series of, of kind of uh, industrial uh, structures in brick, uh, which have just slowly decayed and decayed away. You can see some more of them there. But an excellent place to dispose of a body uh, and an excellent place to dispose of one that the intention was it would never ever be found again.
So that's pretty much it, really. We've taken you round from 126, 127 Newton Road. You can see some more of the brick buildings there. I hope you found it of use. I certainly found it an interesting visit, as I always do. But uh, if you've got any questions about it, I'm going to be posting this onto Facebook. Uh, and it's obviously on YouTube. If you've got any questions about it, I'll, I'll, try, to, uh, I'll try to answer them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Bye-bye.